Welcome to NFL World, where NFL starts and ends. I'm your host, Jacob. And we're doing this a little later today, so it's just going to be an uploaded video instead of a live stream. So let's begin with the news of what happened over the last, eh, two days. So, Brandon Ayuk, it has been determined, has suffered a torn ACL and MCL. There is no determination at this time of if there's any more damage to his knee. But that is a big loss for the 49ers who are reeling with injuries. As Monday's report came out, they got nicked up. They really did get nicked up in the loss against the Chiefs. Including Debo Samuel, who is now out of the hospital. He went into the hospital Monday evening, Monday afternoons, around that time, he had pneumonia and he had fluid in his lungs and was released Tuesday night. And, you know, there's no timetable when he'll come back. But if he's gone and Ayuk is gone, now you're talking about Jawan Jennings did not play on Sunday. So you're saying, okay, we're potentially down to a fourth, fifth, and sixth guys, and one guy has only played in one game. That's a lot to ask for. And you say, well, Jacob, how could it get worse? It managed. George Kittle has a foot sprain. He's considered day-to-day. We'll see what happens from there. But it's it's not good. Now, I say that from a 49 percent. For a Cowboys perspective, you're coming off a bye week. You got dismantled by the Lions. This is your shot. This is your shot. Win this game. They are not healthy. Win it. They don't have their star running back. There's potentially their star tight end. Their second best receiver. Potentially not even their first or even third receivers. You should win this game. I say should. Because I don't trust this team right now. We will get into it. No later on. Um, Talking about the Niners, they have said that, look, McCaffrey, Greenlaw, probably only coming back after the bye, which is after this game against the Cowboys. Moving on to what happened on Monday night. It was... Really tough showing by the Bucks, And they ended up losing a couple pieces. Mike Evans re his hamstring injury in the back of the red zone. That's not great. But then you lose Chris Godwin in a final minute for the year. And the NFL has said they are looking into to see if it's a hip drop tackle. Here's my thing of the whole situation with Chris Godwin. That is so unfair for Chris Godwin. The reason it is unfair is because Chris has been a great player. He has some of the best hands in the league. He's never talked about. We talk about all these guys. We're going to talk about DeAndre Hopkins. We're going to talk about Cooper Cup. We're going to talk about... Like you see that these guys are talked about all the time. Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, DeAndre Hopkins, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill. But like, they just catch everything. Or they catch whatever's thrown to them. Or they are really hard to defend or whatever. Debo Samuel, same thing. When you lose a guy, Chris Godwin, that that's quite a shocker. Now, he suffered an ankle injury, had a procedure done the next day, on Tuesday. He's done for the year. That's a loss. It's a big loss. Your chance of competing in this division was to have Chris Godwin and Mike Evans healthy. And now they're not there at this time. That's a loss. And it's just... It's a stat. 
it's a shot right into your gut over and over again and hoping that you can find a way to respond. You gotta find a way to respond somehow because it did not look like you did against Baltimore. Now, I want to make an amendment. Hassan Reddick did show up on Monday. So he is there on Monday. But this becomes a thing. And ESPN, I have to fix this for ESPN because I always have to fix ESPN's messes. And this is why you come here. This is the reason. ESPN doesn't get this stuff done. Right. I'll get it done. Here's how we do it. They brought up they, first of all, they showed a good stat. I want to talk about this first. I didn't talk about this on Monday because I only looked at it Monday night because I I don't like what ESPN's been doing the last couple of years and it's just a bunch of people who, argue who have no idea what they're talking about. So they were talking about the game against the Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they said, well, Russell didn't look great to start. No, he didn't. He didn't look great. He hasn't played in a year. Okay, I'm fine with that. You got it going. You got it going. 16 of 29. All right, good. The Jets, quarterback Aaron Rodgers, completion wise, I mean, he, he looks fine. Like, you look at the stats, he looks okay. Team wise, it's a mess. And I said, look, Devontae Adams isn't going to fix it. They need to do other things. They gotta run the ball more. The only time the offensive line looks really good is when they run the football. When they pass the ball, they look out of place. Raj isn't on the same page as the wide receivers. He's on the same page as Devontae Adams. He's not. The defense can't stop the run, can't stop the pass. There's a problem. But here's something I didn't pay attention to, and I saw it on the video, and I gotta give him credit for it. I gotta give ESPN credit. They went and said, Robert Sala from weeks one to week five. After that, he was fired. From that point, he gave up a to- his defense gave up a total of 17 points a game. You can win a lot of games like that. I don't care. As long as your offense can score more than 17, you're going to win. That's just the case. Since Sala's firing, so let's do this. Let's do. BFS and let's do AFS. I was going to do BS and AS, but I couldn't do that. So before Salah's firing, they gave up 17 points a game and about 250 yards a game. It's really good. He got five. Since the firing of Robert Sala, so AFS, 30 points a game given up, 385 yards of offense. Let me get that up. If you can't, I gotta give credit to ESPN for that. I do. But in two weeks, they've given up. At least 30 points a game twice, they would give up, 30, they'd average 30 points a game. The defense has given up 30 points a game on average. And a total of 385 yards a game. It's not good. It's not good. And it's part of that because they elevated a guy who's never been a head coach, who was a DC, now he's a head coach. And He's, there's too much on his plate? Yes. Yes. There's too much on his plate. You can't be told that. You can't be told that there's too much. Oh, hold on. There we go. Can't be told there's too much on his plate. No one can. And this made me laugh. I saw this on Monday. It made me laugh. So... Aaron Rodgers, and I actually went and I listened to the whole question. I didn't listen to the whole press comments because Rodgers' press comments get weird. I listened to the whole question. Rodgers goes and says, and they brought this up 
Dan Patrick brought this up to Steve Young. This is what he said. Steve, listen to this. And I'm, it sounded like Steve already had heard it before. So he knew pretty much what he was getting to. I'm going to start with the first part of the question. And then work backwards. So, well, actually, let me rephrase. Let's use Rogers point two as point one and point one as point two because they don't connect at all. Point two was he talked about how the players have to be accountable, how he has to be better, and how the team has to be better. Perfect. Great answer. It's a cliche, absolutely, but it's a perfect answer. It's a perfect answer. All right. Well, what was one that we're describing as two? Not listen to you guys. He's talking about the New York media. Not listen to you guys, number one. So uh, let me say what Rogers exactly said. When they asked, how do we fix this? How do you fix this? Because they're two and five. Which, by the way, the New York media could be a lot worse than this. <laughs> they were very soft. Like, you could not be any softer. If you were getting punched by pillows, it's somehow softer than that. Because that's what was going on. They really, like, laid this up for him. And he said, not listen to you guys, number one. Number two is be accountable. Aaron! Hello! You're the least accountable quarterback that I've ever seen for an extended period of time. You're the least accountable guy. You haven't played well. You're turning the ball over. Not his fault. I get it. A lot of tip passes. A lot of passes that are just great plays. I get it. But you're turning the ball over. They, the Jets have run the ball only 30 times in two weeks. They run the ball well. They ran it 15 times in Against Buffalo, 15 times against the Steelers. The Cowboys could run against the Steelers, okay? Run the football. Run it. The one thing you can do is run the football. Run it. Run it 30 times. Have Aaron throw it 20 times. And let's call it a day. It's not hard. They don't do it. They're trying to throw the football. Devontae Adams, who just got there like on Tuesday or Wednesday, went... <laughs> Let's get I got something right. There it is. Got there on a Tuesday. He's a big part of the game plan. At one point, he's playing 27 of the 29 snaps. I don't understand that. He's not on the same page as Aaron. Garrett Wilson's struggling. When they actually did run the football, they had success against the Steelers. They walked down the field. They stopped doing it, and now all of a sudden, they're losing the game. Now you can't run the football because you're down by 14. And the time possessions completely came out of your favor. And that's what's going on. That's this team. They depend so much on Aaron Rodgers. It's just on and on and on. And then he goes and preaches about not listening to you guys, but be accountable. Look, the us against the world mentality, which is what I think Aaron was trying to get to. It was just not what he did. You know, he he should have said, look, like we need to really depend on us. We got to only depend on us. We can't depend on anything else. That's what he should have said. Or something similar to that. Us against the world mentality works great. Do it in a lot. Do it in a lot. And then don't say about accountability. It doesn't work. It does not work. I want to bring this up. This is another good point. By ESPN. Damian Woody actually brought up this point. The Jets are a roster. They're not a team. They're a roster. And I sat back. And I thought. Okay where is he going with this? And he says. When there's issues. They just throw another name. At it. And hope it works. Very accurate. Very accurate. They do. They throw a name and hope that it works. 
They did it. I mean, look at it. Weeks one through five, they had Salah. That, they felt didn't work. So they fired him, bring in Albrecht, and move Todd Downing to OC. He's calling the plays. That didn't work. Okay, what can we do? We put Devont, we, let's go get Devontae Adams. That didn't work, at least for this week, didn't work. This week, they're bringing in Hassan Reddick. What are they going to do next week? What are they going to do the week after? Or the week after? They're playing New England. They should win this. If they don't, I'm going to be very concerned. I'm very concerned if they do not win. They New England just lost to Jacksonville. And their own coach called them soft. If you lose to them, and you don't humiliate them, I'm sorry. Like, winning the game is important, absolutely. They're the potentially worst team in the NFL. You should beat them by a lot. You should at least beat them by 10. Okay? You should at least. Now, moving on. Uh, the Saints have st- extended Alvin Kamara. Two years, $24.5 million, and you say, why that much? Well, if you understand the context, yes, it's $12 million a year. Maybe less, but with some incentives in it. I understand that. But here's the reason why they did it. His contract next year was about that much. He was going to make $24 million next year. They're going to have to cut him. And hopefully he can come back. So they said, no, let's do this. Let's cut that. So that contract next year doesn't exist. This is your new contract. So it's technically, this is it. For a 30-year-old guy, that's pretty good. All they even considered. Uh, let's talk about Jam- Jamison Williams. The Detroit Lions, why does he for Jamison Williams? Suspended two games for performance-enhancing drugs. This is not the first time he's been suspended. But they gave him two games. He has a window to appeal it. The two games he missed would be, I believe, this week against the Titans and next week against the Packers. He could appeal it, or he could take it. They asked Dan Campbell about it. He said, I can't really talk about it. So. Let's see what happens. Um, the Chiefs traded for DeAndre Hopkins. It was the fourth conditional fourth round pick. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and you could ch- say I'm wrong, I'd have to really go and check my notes and all that stuff. I think it's the same pick they got for trading the Jerry Sneed. I think it's the same thing. It might be. Or maybe it was a second, but this is a conditional to the second. I don't know. Something. So anyway, DeAndre Hopkins, he's not a fast guy, but he's reliable. He wasn't really getting used in Tennessee. You probably knew he was going to get moved. This is how it happened. I'd be surprised if another wide receiver gets moved, by the way, from the Titans. Would not be surprised. Um, Seahawks and Titans also made a trade. They traded linebackers, actually. Jerome Baker of the Seahawks is now with the Titans. And the Titans trade Ernest Jones IV. Let's see what happens. With that, but I, I think that's a good trade by the Titans and Seahawks. Both guys do a very good job. And also, way to spite the van by the Seahawks to go get the, one of their players. Final two things before we hit our predictions for week number eight. Tua Tungle-Vailoa returns to practice. The hope is he plays in week eight. He is not going to play with a guardian cap. Those are the caps that are supposed to help against concussions. He is not wearing. I don't know if they really do anything. I know Ed V talked about that on the Manning cast. He didn't know if they really did anything. I don't know. I don't know. But Tua is not wearing 
probably the one who should win one, isn't winning one. Might be telling. Um, and last bit of news, Andy Dalton was involved in a car accident on Tuesday. Um, he was okay, no injuries, but he went to the doctor. He went to the hospital to get it checked, and, you know, he's TBD for this Sunday. But the hope is that Andy's okay, and that nothing bad happened, just some car damage. That's the hope. You get put in these situations, that's a, that's all you can hope for. The game don't matter at that point. This, the person's health is what matters. And to try to get back into football and get it with a get out with a positive here. The predictions for week eight. We have Ravens versus the Browns. Browns are getting plus nine. Jameson Winston is going to play. James Winston is gonna play. Um uh, even still, I I mean Jameis throwing the ball to like who? I don't know. I think it'll be I don't think it'll be a be a high scoring game anyway. But I think the Ravens will find a way to win, but it's a closer game. The Ravens win the game twenty one to fourteen. The Browns find something. Next up, Jets vs Patriots plus seven. I'm taking the Jets and they have to win big. They have to. Uh, no one's going to have confidence in this team in the coming weeks. Jets win. Same score as last time, 28-3. to 3. Next up, Titans versus Lions. Lions favored by 11, taking the Lions. Even without James Williams, like, all right, you're not st- stopping Sam Laporta or Amon Ross St. Brown, or even Tim Patrick, even though he can, he can still go a little. No, so, and that's probably a guy that they're depending on. So, I'll get it to the Lions, who also beat an undefeated team, so that's why I'm giving it to. Score is 31 to 10. Next up, Chiefs versus the Raiders. Raiders game plus 10. Aiden O'Connell out with a broken thumb. Gardner Minshew steps in. If the Chiefs lose a game at least any point this year, it will be a divisional game. However, I will not say it's this week. As the Chiefs will win, but it will be a closer game than expected. 24-20 Chiefs. Last game, Cowboys versus 49ers. Five and a half is the score because of or is this line because of the injuries. Until the Cowboys show that they can beat the Niners, I'm taking the Niners to win this. They haven't shown it yet. When they do it, all right. This would also help if the Cowboys could win this game. They'd be four and three heading into Atlanta. So I'd feel much better about this team. But 49ers win this game. But it would be the score of 31 to 20. And that is it for the for NFL World. Let me know in the comment section who you would have winning in week 8. For NFL World, I'm Jacob Hebert.